What's up everyone, my name is Tom and welcome to Techstream. Today we're doing a bit of an unboxing slash review of something I've been looking forward to getting hold of my hands on, another one, for quite a while. This is the Dimmus Tech Mini Test Bench. Now I actually owned one of these a good few years ago when Dimmus Tech first really started out producing them. Um, unfortunately during house moves and things it ended up getting damaged and I couldn't use it anymore. But Dimmus Tech are coming back and they sent me this to review. So like I said, this is the Dimmus Tech Mini. I'm gonna be putting some links down below as to where you can get them. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by cracking open this box and seeing what is inside. So let's get into this box. Now I'm not actually 100% sure what they sent over regarding accessories and things. Um, I basically got chatting to the, one of the new guys that's sort of helping run it and he said, oh, we'll fire you one over from our factory in Italy where these are actually made. They are actually made in Europe. So, we do get an inventory of what is in the box. We get a nice little pot full of screws. I do have a rough idea because like I said, I have actually had one of these in the past. And one of the things I love about this case should be, at least it always used to be, in this little pot, which doesn't want to open for me today. Yeah, and that is them there. These are the motherboard standoffs. So in here you've got all of the different screws you need for putting the thing together, mounting hard drives, mounting motherboards. We do then have power supply, uh, not power supply, power and reset button cables, as well as rubber feet for the bottom. Those are your cables. These are actually sort of clicky vandal switches. I believe they're actually illuminated ones as well. Yep, they are illuminated as well to what appear to be strange little things this is actually quite a nice feature this is a fan bracket a movable fan bracket so if you're water cooling where obviously you've got no cooling or anything over the vrms because you're just using a water block you do have the option there for some airflow that is your pci express slot bracket uh, we've got eight on this one this is like i said the mini they do do a bigger version but you've got eight in black that particular one and then if we get rid of some of the packaging, we will uncover the case. Now, like I said, I have actually had one of these in the past, but it was an older version. And now we can get the box itself out of the way. So this is the case. Now, it's not really a case. It is a test bench, but you can kind of see what I mean. It is a mini. It is relatively compact compared to some of the options on the market. But that is pretty much it for what is in the box. So let's come back to a normal shoot, shall we say. So this is our test bench mini. Quite a co re relatively compact looking thing. Now, there's a couple of things I have noticed. There doesn't appear to be any instructions. Hmm. Not the end of the world, but at the end of the day, this is targeted at somebody that knows a little bit about what they're doing, shall we say. It's not really aimed at people who don't have a clue about what to do with a computer. So, screw pop. Um, I'm just going to roughly assemble the case together, um, rather than filling it with stuff for today. But, it's actually relatively simple things like your standoffs these simply screw in uh, one thing i have found with this in the past now all of these screws are made out of aluminium don't over tighten them the case is steel the screws are aluminium something will give if you over tighten them all of these things they literally hand tight and snug do not go over tightening them 
and it is just a case of filling in all of the screws that you need. So we're going to sort of speed this up a little bit because you don't really want to be sitting here watching me randomly screw stuff in. So I'm back and I've been playing with the Dimmus Tech Bench for about a week. I've actually had a few different test systems in it and pulled out of it and on it and everything. And I've got to say, yep, as I remember, the Dimmus Tech Mini is probably one of my favourite test benches I've ever used. And I've used about three or four different ones, ranging in prices. This is more to the mid-range pricing. I believe they're about $120. I will put some links as to where you can buy one. But anyway, what did I find with it? Now, the great plus points, the, the main plus point of this case is these little things. Never seen them for sale anywhere else. I have actually looked for them in the past for doing a DIY test bench. Um, these little things, they're effectively, they're a motherboard standoff, but they, they split in the middle and you simply push, you pop your motherboard on and it just sits there. It holds it secure, but not tight. So you can just lift up a replacement, no worries. Um, I got on well with the cable management. There isn't really any. There's just a few cable holes across the front here. One for your sort of 24 pin running up through here. Run your PCI Express, your SATA cables, things like that through there. I you when I do it, I run my twin my eight pin EPS ones. I just run them out of the side here. Um, I put a whopping great big kilowatt power supply in here, but I've had to put it back out to stick it in another system just temporarily. But that is the perks of this case. You can just pull stuff in and out as quick as you want. Um, it takes two minutes to throw a system in it. It takes two minutes to tear it back down. So, what else did I find about it? Now, one of the things that they do appear to have changed from when I last used it is these screws at the top. Now, these used to be little thumb screws, but they don't include them in the pack anymore. Instead, it is just standard Phillips heads. Um, I will find the right set. It's just some standard Phillips head screws, which it's not the end of the world, but I would say if you're gonna get, if you do get one of these, just do a little bit of shopping around, get yourself some thumb screws here. I do recommend get some steel ones because, and to be honest with you, I may, this may be why they've stopped including them, is I found that with the old one that I used to have, is that the thumb screws were aluminium, like this one I've just screwed in, and these are steel brackets and it would actually sort of get stuck and you'd be up the creek and eventually they'd shear off. Um, so that be maybe one of the reasons why they haven't included, or I don't think the problem is, there's no instructions. Um, but yeah, so there's no instructions or anything included and there goes a little rubber grommet. Um, but it isn't brain surgery to assemble, it does come pretty much assembled. Uh, but overall, I got on really well with it. But there were a couple of minor issues. The wiring for the Vandal switches. Now, I actually happen to have a mod mat here and it pretty much tells you how to connect it, which was really handy because there's no instructions on how to wire them up, which a bit of Googling will get you there anyway. Not the end of the world, but it would be nice to see some instructions. The other thing I found, strangely, is that the cables don't actually fit the spades on the vandal switches. I don't know if you guys can see that from here, but um, you've got the little sort of uh, prongs sticking out of the back of your switch, and you've got a female connector, and the connectors are too big. So what I had to do, I spoke with the guys at um, Dimmus Tech about this, and they said the same thing. Just grab a pair of pliers and give them a little tweak. Just makes them a bit tighter and then they will fit. I have mentioned this, hopefully maybe they'll, they'll change that in the future and they will make them the right sort of size, but I know that the reason is they use the same cables on a few different cases with different sized switches and these are actually the right size cables for the bigger switch. They just need a pinch with a pair of pliers. The only other thing I found, weird enough, is with this fast quick mount hard drive on the side. Now, as you can see, it does just sort of go through the holes and slot down. And I've actually had to put a pair, some normal screws in it. I was hoping that the thumb screws with the blank bit on it, which they sit on perfectly, and they screw into there, would then allow me to do that. However, problem. 
the screws don't fit in the hole. And I mean literally, they just don't quite fit. It's probably about the thickness of the powder coating that they've used. So whether or not it was measured prior to coating, possible, but it doesn't fit. Not the end of the world, like I said, you can just use the normal scry screws, but it does then mean the whole point of this bit on the side is it's meant to be quick access. And quick access to me means screwless or toolless, and you could just use the thumb screws. And like I said, they screw into the hard drive, but they just don't screw into, they don't fit through the holes. But apart from that, I had no major problems with it. It's great to use. It, it is exactly what you see. It's a test bench, okay? So there's no cable management, and I don't want there to be any cable management, because I want to be able to add cables to my modular power supply, remove them as and when I want. I want to be able to put a monstrous power supply in there with no space restrictions. I want to be able to fit um, a full ATX motherboard, and you can even fit the sort of extended ones that come out a little bit past this first set, of, past this last set of holes without any problems. This case means, well, it's not a case, this test bench means you can fit any size of components on there. There's no limitations in, there's just, it's an unlimited size case. There's no uh, limits to length of graphics cards or anything like that. And if you are looking for something where, I mean, you could use it every day. You could put your main system on it and it'd look good. Yeah, but that's not really what it's designed for. It is designed for somebody that is swapping components out often. So you could be a serial upgrader and think, hmm, could be an option. Yeah, um, but there's one, oh, the only other limiting factor, and that is down to the size of it. Um, there's no water cooling options for this. They do do a bigger version, which does have fan mounts on the sides, and uh, the PSU is actually mounted at the back, but I didn't want that one purely because I've only got a little bit of space. And at the end of the day, I wanted something that would just sit there and just do what I needed from it, which this does do. But what I am gonna do is where I've got this little doodad mounted, do, 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 if I just unscrew this, there is effectively a, it's what's called a rivet nut, and it is just a, a rivet with a thread in it, and there's three down here. And what I'm actually gonna be doing is I'm gonna manufacture for myself an L-shaped bracket that will then allow me to mount an AIO cooler, or even a custom loop if I wanted. Um, sort of like a, a slightly modified custom loop to keep it all compact on the side here to allow me to use AIOs. And the other thing I liked about it, motherboard cutout, just in the right space. And it does mean that you can actually change coolers and things without having to remove the motherboard. It is easy enough though, should you need to. But backing plates and things can be held from underneath. Because one of the other ones that I had recently, um, it was a phobia one. No cutout. And you, it, it, you can't really get your hand underneath to support a back plate. This one has the cutout and it is compact enough that you can you can get to it all easily. Um, so yeah, the Dimmus Tech Mini. It's, the actual chassis, I'm gonna say, is perfect. There's only a few little problems. Screws not fitting through the hole, not the end of the world. Uh, the cables don't quite fit. The only other problem, there's no instructions, which I've got to say, I do have an advantage because I've had one. Maybe I didn't have any problems because of that, somebody who has never seen or used one of these in the past may look at this and go, where do I start? Now, I did do some Googling. There is actually a foreign, it was, I believe, originally an Italian one with some pictures in it on the Dimmus Tech website. But it's about as useful as a chocolate fiber because you can't read anything. But again, I will be mentioning this to Dimmus Tech. And from what I've seen so far, any feedback, they will be taking a look at it and they are going to do something about it. So there we go. That's about it for today. That is me and the Dimmus Tech Mini. I am going to give it a huge thumbs up. I love these things. They're relatively good value for money. It is a niche product, so they're always a little bit more than what material materialistically there are. But hey, it's good quality. You've got some nice vandal switches, which have got a lovely sort of click to them and everything. All overall, it's just a nice product. Lovely finish, available in a wide range of colours. So what I am going to do, I'm going to put some links as to where you can buy these down below. Um, massive thanks to the guys at Dimmus Tech and Mod My Mods over in the States for sorting me out with one of these. They actually sent this direct from the factory in Italy. And that is about it for today. So if you've liked this, 
give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, not a problem. As always, if you want to see more of me, click the little subscribe icon. Don't forget that notification bell. And I am here every single Saturday at 6pm. Thank you very much and bye for now.